Hello everyone, Meldron here. Welcome back to another classic WoW.Live guide. This time we'll be covering the Whirlwind Weapons, which are available to warriors in Classic WoW. We will cover all the steps to get your Whirlwind Weapon, as well as any strategies that may help you. A link to these slides and timestamps will be available via a pinned comment below. So what are the Whirlwind Weapons? There are three possible weapons that you can get after completing a chain that is available only to warriors. This is a class specific quest for warriors, obtainable starting at level 30. And after you complete your Berserker Stance and Intercept quest, you'll be given the quest to get the Whirlwind Weapon of your choice. And you have the choice between a rare quality level 40 two-handed axe, mace, or sword. That's right, a level 40 rare quality blue weapon available at level 30. However, there is a caveat. It requires getting items from mobs level 33 to 39, and at the end you have to kill a level 40 elemental elite named Cyclonian. Definitely a tall order for any level 30 warrior. So I'm sure you may be asking yourself now, this seems like a pretty daunting task, should I get one? And the answer is yes, absolutely, if you can get it early. The higher your level is, the easier this quest becomes to solo, but the less relevant the upgrade will be. On the right here you see the Whirlwind Axe, we'll use that for example, it's one of the Whirlwind weapons, they're very similar in DPS. Now compare that to all the other weapons you can get in the level range of 30 to 40. The higher level you get, there are many options you can replace the Whirlwind Axe with, or the Whirlwind Sword, whatever you decide to go with, the higher your level, the less relevant this upgrade is. So you really have to think to yourself, can I get this early? Can I get help getting it? Because you're going to need help if you're going to get to it early. But on the flip side, if you know you can get one of these other weapons, if it's available in the AH, or you know someone who can get it for you, or is selling it to you, just imagine getting a Pendulum of Doom at level 39, and you haven't gotten your Whirlwind Axe yet, there's no bother getting it. So just keep that in mind. Warrior leveling is tough, so any upgrade you can get will have massive impact. And a level 40 rare, obtainable at level 30, really pushes the needle for warriors. You should really consider it if you can get the help. Now, I've kind of already alluded to this, but can you do this yourself? And at level 30, guys, to be purely honest with you, completing this whole quest chain is nearly impossible. For one of the main parts of the quest chain, you're going to have to kill mobs that are 33 to 39. So they're going to be higher than you at level 30, obviously. But on top of that, you're going to have to fight a level 40 elite like we talked about before. And this is going to require five players that are level 35 to 40. So you will not be able to solo this yourself. The higher you get in levels, the easier this will become. And there is some strategies that you could solo this at high 30s, low 40s. But at that point, again, is it worth it? You have to ask yourself that. But we'll go over that later. Two really good strategies is to either get a high level, so if the server's not fresh, try to get a 60 friend, it makes things a lot easier to get all of these things done. Another thing you can do is get a group of players, but remember, if you have other players, like if you have a large guild and you can get like 10 people, form a group with five of them, tag the mob, and then have your other five friends hit them. If you have enough people, a large group of level 30s can get this done. Just make sure you don't do a raid group because you won't be able to complete the quest if you're in a raid group. Set up a group of five people and have some other friends just tag along, tag it, and then have them, everyone just beat Cyclonian down. It's a good strategy to get it done quickly. If it's going to benefit your main tank, your off tank, or some of your DPS you're going to be raiding with at the end, you should definitely consider doing this and help your warriors out. And if you're the warrior here, don't be afraid to ask for help. Ask guildies, friends, if you got some cash, consider paying someone to help you. There will be a lot of people that will, of course, find it attractive if you say you're going to pay them. Now, for the non-warriors listening to this guide, it really benefits the server as a whole to have more warriors reach 60 quicker. More tanks equals more groups equals more gear equals more pre-raid bis. So guys, think, help the warriors out. Any help you can give them will really make an impact in their leveling process. Just remember, the more tanks equals faster group formation and clearing content sooner. All right, it's time to go over the step-by-steps. What do you have to do first? Well, first thing you have to do is ding level 30. Once you do, you'll go to your warrior class trainer to learn your new abilities and you'll see a quest. Doesn't matter what warrior you are, what race, what faction, you'll get the same quest. And you'll receive the quest to receive your Berserker Stance and the spell Intercept, which is similar to Charge, but you can use it in combat in Berserker Stance if you have the Rage. The quest is called the Islander and you will be tasked to reach Frey Island, which is off the eastern coast of the Barrens and it's in between Ratchet and North Watchhold and it's on a small island south of Dorotar. You'll see it in the map there. And there's a small land bridge you can actually walk from the shore to the island you don't have to swim across you can actually walk across now if you're a horde this will be really easy for you to get to obviously you're probably gonna be questing somewhere in kalimdor or you have easy access to the crossroads or Gamar ratchet you can just run right there alliance you're gonna have to take the boat from booty bay closest would be duskwood through stranglethorn vale if you have the stranglethorn vale flight path you'll just run through stranglethorn vale and you'll eventually reach booty bay take the boat to ratchet and then run over to Frey island and once you get there you'll turn in the quest to clanic mcleod at 69.49 and this is an obvious Highlander reference, so if you're a fan of Highlander, you probably get the reference. Pretty interesting stuff. 
So you've made it to Frey Island, what's the next step? You'll accept the quest, The Affray, from Clannock, and then you'll enter a gauntlet-style event. After stepping on a grate in the middle area, you'll see a bunch of congregators there, you'll see a bunch of spectators. So you walk onto this metal grate, and the event will start. And this is an actually a 10-minute time event, and what you'll have to do is defeat six level 26 to 27 Affray Challengers. Now, these are red enemies, which means if you're in range, they will immediately attack you. Now, they won't wait for you to kill the previous one. They will activate every 25 to 30 seconds. So you have to be on top of your game, kill these things fast, try to restore any health during the downtime. So get some a few ticks of food or a few ticks of a bandage. Now, what you can do is try to outrange. So you can aggro one, walk away from the center. And this way, when they actually activate, they won't immediately attack you and you might have time to actually bandage or eat. Now, a really interesting, flavorful tidbit, there are multiple comments on Vanilla WoW databases from 1.12 days, we're talking original Vanilla WoW, that you could potentially use Demoralizing Shout, I didn't say Intimidating Shout, Demoralizing Shout to fear these Afraid Challengers. I tested this on my PTR, and this is not the case. So, I'm not sure if it'll be available for Classic, but you should definitely try it if you can. After you kill the six Afraid Challengers, Big Will will walk up. Now this is very important, he is yellow to you, which means you can get full health before actually engaging him. He hits pretty hard, so at level 30, I would definitely recommend having a potion with you. When you get to about 25% health, make sure you pop the potion. Also, make sure you're wielding a two-hander to get more out of your retaliation talent. Now, retaliation has 30 charges, you will counterattack every time someone attacks you, and you want to counterattack with a weapon that does more weapon damage. So make sure you use a two-hander, not a one-hander, you'll do more, it'll have more of an effect. If you feel like you need to bandage, and your potion's on cooldown, use Intimidating Shout, bandage up and then re-engage hopefully using these strategies you will down big will now remember this is a timed event you have 10 minutes so if you do die you can run back and the event should be where you left off if it's not don't worry you can always abandon the quest and start over just make sure you have enough potions food bandages and your cooldowns are up unfortunately retaliation has a 30 minute cooldown so so do your best to get it done the first time well if you're reading this slide congratulations you've killed big will after you killed him, talk to Clanock and he'll give you both Berserker Stance and Intercept as quest rewards of turning in the Affray. He'll also have a new quest for you called the Wind Watcher. Now this is the quest chain that starts you on the path to get your Whirlwind Weapon. You don't have to do this quest, you're not missing out on any abilities, you're just missing out on a good weapon. So if you take the quest, you're going to head over to Hillsbrad Foothills and meet with Bathra the Wind Watcher at 79.7 in Hillsbrad or 80.66 in Alterac. He technically is in Alterac Mountains, but you can see him on both maps where his area is. If you follow the river all the way through Hillsbrad Foothills, north he'll be on the eastern side of the river all the way up near the all track hills brad border and if you're forward you're just going to fly to tower mill and walk right up the bank of the river and if you're alliance you're going to go south shore and do the same exact thing and once you meet him you'll see this troll type area and he'll be in a hut and you're going to talk to him and he'll give you the quest called cyclonian so the Cyclonian quest is basically just tasking you to grab different items. And he'll give you a parchment, and the parchment will explain to you all the things he needs. And the first thing he needs is eight life root. And these are herbs that you can pick them yourself if you're an herbalist. You can buy them. This is even easier. You can just go to the AH or buy them off a of guildy. Or you can loot them off mobs. Now he directs you in his parchment to kill Withervine Beast and Duskwallow Marsh. But these are level 35 to 39. So if you're doing this early at level 30, just buy them or pick them. There are two really good places to pick them. You can go up near Lordermere Lake in northwestern Alltrack Mountains. Lordermere Lake, where the Fenris Isles are, they're on the, the Alltrack Shore, the northern Alltrack Shore. You can pick a lot of these life root there. And then they're also all over Stranglethorn Valley. And you're going to have to go to Stranglethorn for the next part of the quest, so you could pick them there if that could be a very easy way of doing it. Just make sure you grab eight of them, which really isn't a tall order. The next part of the quest could be a little bit more challenging, especially if you're level 30. And this is to collect 30 Blood Scalp Tusks from Blood Scalp Trolls in Stranglethorn Vale. And this will drop off any Blood Scalp Troll. They're pretty much all over the northern part of Stranglethorn Vale, west of Lake Nazfaridi. And you'll see that there are troll ruins in the northern area of Stranglethorn Vale. The closer the trolls are to Gromgol base camp, the lower level they are, and they become higher level the more northwest you proceed. In my experience, the drop rates are lower in lower level trolls and higher in higher level ones. If you have some help, you may want to consider going into the most northwestern ruins and farming them there. And if you're a horde, there's another quest called Hunt for Yeniku, which tasks you with getting the same quest item. So if you have that quest, you can actually knock two birds with one stone here. You'll need nine for that quest and 30 for the warrior quest. Just remember, these trolls are anywhere between level 33 and 37, so take that into consideration depending on what level you are. Now, the last thing you'll need is the hardest, of course, 
and this is to collect the charms off of elementals in Arathi Highlands. And you'll need to collect eight charms from each type of elemental. There are three. There are fire elementals, water elementals, and wind elementals. So the burning charms are located at the A on the map there in the northwestern part of Arathi Highlands. The thundering charms off the air elementals are located in C, right near Refuge Point. And the cresting charms, which drop off the water elementals, are west of Hammerfall. And these can be bought off the AH. They don't have to be farmed. You can go buy them. And the drop rate is relatively high, around 50 now these elementals are level 38 to 39 so if you're level 30 there's pretty much no way in hell you're going to get down these guys they're a red to you they will hit you very hard and you'll miss a lot if you are level 30 you may want to consider buying them getting a higher level guildy or a group of your friends to get these down when you get eight of each type of charm head back to bothra and all mountains now once you head back to Bothra, you'll notice that he has a cauldron near his hut. If you click on that cauldron, you'll put your 24 charms, 8 of each type, into the cauldron and you'll create the essence of exile. This is the last piece that you need. You see so you have your life root, you have your tusks, and your essence of exile. You'll turn those things into Bothra and you'll accept the quest, the summoning. Now, please make sure your party, your guildies, your friends, the level 6 you're with is ready for this because as soon as you turn in the quest, Bothra will leave his hut, walk down a path, and summon Cyclonian, which is the level 40 elite elemental. Well, it's time to defeat Cyclonian now. So there's two ways of approaching this, solo and in a group. So let's go over souling first. If you are souling, make sure you have at least two nature protection potions with you. You're going to pop one of those potions before you start the event. There's a two minute cooldown before you can pop another one. Now remember, this absorption of nature damage lasts one hour. So you're going to drink the first potion, start the event. You'll absorb a lot of the damage the Cyclonian will do on you. And as soon as that absorption comes off, you're going to drink the second potion. So you're going to try to mitigate as much damage as possible. While that's happening, you're going to blow all your cooldowns. You're going to have retaliation. You're going to use intimidating shout once the retaliation over you're going to rebandage anything you can do to kind of do as much damage as you possibly can now of course the higher level you are the easier this is going to be he has a lot of interesting abilities too you have to watch out for one is knock away well he'll literally just knock you pretty far so if you back up against the wall you pretty much negate this thing there's also a whirlwind which is a cleave and it's about a two second cast and you'll notice this red swirling around the base of cyclonian if you see that just strafe to the side and you should get out of it range before it hits you and the last thing he does is an aoe stun called gust of wind this is also a two second cast and you'll know he's casting it because his hands will glow green if you don't want to be cc'd for two seconds or three seconds whatever it is make sure you strafe away from it or move away from it now if you're in a group things of course are much easier you're likely going to be tanking him so make sure your range remain at max range so they don't get hit by the whirlwind or gust of wind and make sure you tank him facing the wall that you have your back to so he can't cleave anyone in front of him and that should be it so make sure you, you follow these strategies and you should get him down so congratulations, you've done it. You beat Cyclonian. You should thank anyone that helped you. If you did it yourself, pat yourself on the back because it's pretty challenging. Now, when you kill Cyclonian, you'll loot the Whirlwind Heart and you'll turn this item into Bothra and then he will give you a choice of which weapon you want. The axe, the warhammer, or the sword. Congratulations, these weapons are amazing. They look great. So the only thing left to do now is go kill stuff like Conan the Barbarian. Because that's really what you feel like when you're wielding this weapon. So I'm sure you're asking, is he going to cover which weapon to pick? Now, most warriors will, of course, pick the axe. And we'll get to that in a second. I just want to cover that the DPS for each of them is extremely similar now. You have a 0.1 variance depending on which weapon you pick. That's really not much to talk about. But the 15th strength is something to talk about. That equates to about 2.14 DPS at level 60. I know you're not level 60, but the equations we have are for level 60. You actually get more bonus from strength the lower level you are. It's approximately 37 to 38 DPS the weapon does. So that's a good amount of DPS for level 30. You know, you're level 30 you're, and you have a level 40 item level axe. So that's pretty impressive. But with what does differ between these weapons are their speeds. So the axe is the slowest. And the reason why most warriors will agree with this, and Takanashi was kind enough to talk me through this, because it's, it's a little bit more than just the speed. The slower the weapon is, the more impactful each swing potentially can be. So the slower the weapon, the higher the range of the damage. But what's more important is that works synergistically with crit. And you should really be stacking crit in warrior, especially low levels. Crit is huge. Since your weapon damage is higher, at higher top end, your crits will be higher. So that's very important. And this is what we're going to work synergistically with two different talents. It'll work synergistically with axe specialization if you're leveling arms, and that increases your chance to proc crits when you're using an axe. So the more you crit, the more damage you'll do with a slower weapon. And it'll also work synergistically with flurry, which flurry increases your attack speed. So you'll get a lot more impact out of flurry with the slower your weapon is. Now, I know you're going to say, well, I'm human. So shouldn't I get the mace or the sword? The issue with warriors is you're really going to fight mobs that are higher level than you. This is not very efficient when you consider leveling speed. So the reduction in the penalty from glancing blows you get from weapon skill from your racials really isn't that big of a deal. Now, of course, orcs do benefit the most here because they do have axe specialization, but that 
that ratio is not what you should think about when you're picking your weapon. Now, there is something to be said about the sword because it attacks more frequently and misses won't be as impactful as the axe. If you don't like to miss, you may want to consider the sword. I always go with the axe, guys, because I like to see the big numbers and I like to have really high crit potential and engagement potential, especially if you're hamstring kiting. If you're hamstring kiting, you're always going to attack when your swing timer is off cooldown and you'll be trading hit for hit instead of being hit more by the mob you're fighting or the player you're fighting. So the axe in that situation is better. But at the end of the day, guys, pick the weapon you want. If you like the sword, get the sword. If you like the hammer, get the hammer. It's an upgrade no matter what. You're going to get a little bit more impact out of the axe, regardless of racial or faction. That wraps it up, guys. Thanks for being here with me, and thanks for hanging out with me talking about the Whirlwind Axe series. I love this quest chain, and I do it at every warrior I've ever leveled, including my first warrior way back in the day. So if you like this type of content, please consider liking the video. If you enjoy this type of content we make here at Defcat Melder on TV, including the guides we make and the other types of content, like Def Talk, which is a podcast that we put on Spotify, Google Play, Stitcher, SoundCloud, and iTunes, consider subscribing because we have a lot more guides coming, a lot more content coming for the Classic WoW community. You can follow us on Discord or on Twitter. Those links are in the description. This guide will be available on ClassicWild.live. If you haven't checked out ClassicWild.live, it's a collaborative website where content creators and community members just like you can upload guides and other types of information for the Classic Wild community. So check out ClassicWild.live. A friend of the channel and patron, Brandon Media, has started to create Def Camp Melder on TV merchandise in the form of hoodies and t-shirts. If you're interested in sporting some Def Camp Melder on TV merchandise, head on over to Brandon Media's website. The link will be in the description. And last, but certainly not least, I'd like to thank my patrons who are wonderful and always keep me on my toes and really foster us to make better content. So thank you very much for your contributions. If you're interested in becoming a patron and supporting Def Camp Melder on TV directly, a link will be in the description as well as a clickable link at the end of the video. Keep on key bonding and grinding, and I hope to see you in Classic Azeroth.